Hi y'all, let's chat a little bit about the news story going around in relation to Hurricane Maria and its having hit Puerto Rico and the death toll of uh, many thousands that a new study from Harvard estimates uh, occurred. So, for any proper science, uh, for um, honest scientists, their job is to unweave the rainbow. The job of the media, on the other hand, is to reweave the rainbow. So, proper science, you know, done competently by honest researchers, uh, is meant to unweave it, by which I mean to take it apart and explain how it works, why it works, what makes it go. The media's job is to uh, weave narratives. So instead of getting Roy G. Biv, you might, you'll get something like, uh, I don't know, Eerie Vi Vibby or something like that. So they, they've got to rearrange it because they look at the rainbow and they go, oh, just explaining the rainbow is not interesting. We need a narrative to craft, and if we have to change some of the colors, so be it. Anyway, um, there are a number of techniques that are used to perpetrate this uh, crafting of narratives. One of them is abetted by the uh, social so-called sciences, the softer so-called sciences, which aren't too particularly interested in rigor or empirical evidence. Uh, these are the kind of researchers who Tom Lehrer described in his song Sociology as people who can take one small matrix and really make it do great tricks. They can take one small matrix and really do great tricks. And they can snow all their clients by calling it science. Joes, who wrote prose, now write algebra. Who knows? It may be sociology. They're everywhere. Full of sigma and chi-square and full of sociology. They consult, sounding occult, talking like a mathematics PhD. They can snow all their clients by calling it science. Uh, public health has a lot of that component to it. Um, on Twitter this week, it, just as, as an aside, I, someone was taking to task um, an art history person or an, uh, an art major or something like that for uh, their opining on various issues. And who really should you think about uh, listening to uh, on an analytic level when it comes to, uh, I don't know, an art history major or an artist ma art major or something like that versus... Uh, sociologists or psychologists. And it's interesting to note if you go look up the GRE performance by, uh, by educational um, interest, art history people, art theorists, critics, and those types of people outperform psychologists, sociologists, all behavioral scientists, uh, this is on average, all behavioral sciences, I should say, and public health sciences on every metric that is captured on quantitative reasoning, on analytic writing and on their verbal skills. They outperform uh, the weaker scientists on average. So it really raises the question of what is it these people are learning uh, in you know the, these so-called sciences where they are outperformed in their quantitative reasoning by people who study art. Whatever it is, it's clearly not too, uh, too carefully calibrated, uh, too, too finely reticulated to be a proper, rigorous, mathematically rigorous kind of a course. That's why you get a lot of interdisciplinary science-adjacent type things that portray themselves off as science in order to snow their clients, one of which is the media, because it becomes a bit of a, uh, a self, one of those self-licking ice cream cones where the job of the researcher is to publish things that get them more money to keep themselves employed to publish more things. It's just to perpetuate its own existence. This study on that hurricane is one such thing. <clears throat> so they cooperate in this uh, in, in the media. So anyway, uh, one of the ways that the media does this is that they start off with the heart-aching story, the part of the story, and then way down at the bottom they put in the other details, if they put them in at all, that when you think about that it goes, well this really changes the narrative completely. And the reason they put those details at the bottom is because most people don't read the entire article just like my videos and anybody else who uh, produces videos, most of the videos aren't watched uh, start to finish. People jump around, they, they essentially they skim, uh, they catch the first part and go, oh, okay, I know what's going on, and then they, uh, they move on to something else with their lives. Whatever. So here's how, uh, this is on the Washington Post, they start off with the, the heartbreaking story of Miliana uh, Montanez, who um, 
cradled her mother's head as she lay dying on the floor of her bedroom here in Puerto Rico, uh, gasping for air and pleading for help. There was nothing her family could do. It took 20 minutes to find cellular reception to make a 911 call. Inoperative traffic signals slowed down the ambulance, struggling to reach the neighborhood uh, through crippling congestion. Yvette Leon's eyes bulged in terror as she described to her daughter the tiny points of light that appeared before. She took one last desperate gulp of air, just as paramedics arrived far too late. Now, one of the uh, narratives is that uh, these thousands of deaths that uh, you know haven't been properly reported, the underestimate of the death toll, is lack of access to medical care. Well, they don't put into the end of the story that this, uh, this woman, Ms. Leon, actually got medical care. She went to the hospital, uh, they treated her, sent her home, and she died the next morning before she got back to the hospital. Um, <clears throat> now, okay, let me just finish. More than eight months after Hurricane Maria uh, devastated Puerto Rico, the island's slow recovery rate has been marked by a persistent lack of water, a faltering power grid, and lack of essential services all imperiling the lives of many residents, especially the infirm, and those in remote areas hardest hit in September. A new Harvard study published t uh, Tuesday in the New England Journal of Medicine estimates that at least 4,645 deaths can be linked to the hurricane and its immediate aftermath, making the storm far deadlier than previously thought. Official estimates have placed the number of dead at 64, a count that has drawn sharp criticism from experts and local residents, and spurred the government to order an independent review that is yet to be completed. That is yet to be completed. We'll return to that yet to be completed bit. The Harvard findings indicate that health care disruption for the elderly and the loss of basic utility services for the chronically ill had significant impacts. And the study criticized Puerto Rico's methods for counting the dead and its lack of transparency in sharing information as detrimental to planning for future natural disasters. So they say that uh, it indicates that um, they're talking about the loss of basic utility services. If you go look at the study and look at Table S3, they have a section there about public u about utilities, and there's one for electricity, and there's one for water, and they have they have eight strata, and the st strata one, which has the shortest duration of uh, disruption of utilities, they mention water, 24 days. Well, for those of you who know anything about uh, biology. About the longest a person can go without having water is a week, and then they die. So clearly these people were getting water from somewhere where not mentioned in the study. They're not cross-checking to see what, if any, influence the absence of utilities had with the absence of services provided. So just because your tap, when you turn the little knob, doesn't give you water, doesn't mean you haven't been provided water. The fact these people still lived means that they were getting water from somewhere completely... Uh, irrelevant to the researchers. Um, so anyway, they criticized, uh, let me reread it again, the study criticized Puerto Rico's methods for counting the dead uh, as detrimental to planning for future natural disasters. Indeed, they have criticized it. Sit down if you're not already. And if you're not already, do you really watch the internet standing up? I mean, is that a thing? In Puerto Rico, the study says, correctly, every disaster-related death must be confirmed by the Institute of Forensic Sciences. This requires that bodies be brought to San Juan or that a medical examiner travel to the local municipality to verify the death, often delaying the issuance of death certificates. Furthermore, although direct causes of death are easier to, to assign by medical examiners, indirect deaths resulting from worsening of chronic conditions or from delayed medical treatments may not be captured on death certificates. These difficulties pose substantial uh, challenges for the accurate and timely estimation of official all-cause hurricane-related morality. The Puerto Rican government has commissioned an external review of the death registry data as a result of these issues. In other words, these authors want to rush to publish their uh, supposed findings precisely because they're unwilling to wait for the actual scientists to do the actual science to determine, uh, or at least to estimate, uh, within good margins, what the actual death toll is. So they give this long, contrived, um, self-serving uh, argument about how these types of survey data, and I do mean survey data, they go out and ask people uh, who died, what killed them, I'm not kidding, and, uh, and then they say, it's a nice compliment to official study. No, no, it's not. 
it, this is just, you know, it's an expansion of Tom Lehrer's uh, quip in sociology. These are people who can take one small matrix, here a larger one, and really make it to do great tricks. And they can snow their clients, i.e. the people who are going to publish uh, it for them to get more money, by calling it science. So let's, uh, let's look at the, the instrument. Let's not call it an instrument. Their questionnaire. It's not an instrument because it's not doing sophisticated science. It's not doing anything finely. Okay. So let's, uh, let's see. What are some of the questions? 3C is the question they're asking people. These are, this is the, uh, how they're determining the cause of death. Remember, that's what they're looking here to find. What caused uh, a given death or a given set of deaths? That's the question to be answered, you know, in the scientific method. Pose a question, you know, state a problem. That's it. Form a hypothesis. So they're really publishing their hypothesis as the, the final result of scientific analysis. Uh, and they do it in a very uh, circular way, a very question-begging sense. So they ask the residents, what was the cause of death? Died before hurricane? Will be auto-selected of death before hurricane, so that won't count. It's a, that's at least sensible. Trauma from vehicle accident. Well, uh, let me just finish these. Trauma from building collapse, landslide, trauma from other, drowning, fire, electrocution, disruption of usual medical care, medications, dialysis, doctor, nursing facility, medical complications from injury, trauma, or direct illness due to the hurricane, suicide, other, causes not related to the hurricane. So that means that all the other causes, they have already built, they fold, this is baked in are going to be attributed as causes of the hurricane. That's the question to be answered. It's very question begging. Their survey instrument is incapable of answering their question, even assuming you could do, you could do this uh, statistically, which uh, by and large you can't. Because what you're looking here, what you're looking for here is cause. And you're not going to get that from surveys. You don't get cause, uh, causality analysis from surveys. You need experiments. You need real empirical evidence, in this case, to figure it out. So, I'll just give you some, let me see if there's anything else I've written down here. Uh, nope. So, I'll just give you some examples. It's not uncommon uh, in law enforcement for people to know what caused another person's death. They're very often wrong uh, because it's a very, it's a very common uh, logical fallacy. It's ubiquitous. It really is profligate in the news media and in weaker science, uh, sciences or so-called sciences. You have two events, call them A and B, oh, call them states of, of the world, uh, state A, state B. Between state A and state B, the states of uh, affairs in the world, occurs some event, call it C. And then they say, well, A preceded C, which preceded B, A and B are different, therefore C is the reason that B is different from A. Post hoc ergo propter hoc. Uh, and closer related to that is cum hoc ergo propter hoc. Uh, the first is, uh, be, uh, before this, therefore, the cause of it, and the other is uh, these, two, these two things are correlated, therefore, one is the cause of the other. Neither is logically valid, and they lead people astray very often. Um, so, some types of cop questions or law school questions you'll get is about a shooting that happens in a closet. Uh, people are outside of a closet, there are two people in a closet, or in another room or whatever, you hear a bang, uh, you open the door, one person lies dead, another person's holding the gun, standing, him over, standing over the person. So the question is, uh, what is the cause of death? Most people will tell you that the person holding the gun, standing over the dead body, is the reason the dead body is there. Well, this is precisely why uh, forensic science doesn't work by walking out and asking people, excuse me, excuse me, you, you there, what is your intuition about what caused this death? Do tell. Oh, you think it was a murder? Hot damn, I don't have to do an autopsy. Death certificate. Uh, uh, murder! Gunshot wound murder. Yeah. No, that is not how it works. You actually have to do the autopsy uh, to figure out, was it a homicide? Was it a suicide? Was the person even killed by a, by a gun? Uh, that could just be completely irrelevant. These researchers have divine, uh, devised a method of finding out the cause of death by asking people, what do you think the cause of death is? Oh, you think the cause of death was X? Therefore, the cause of death is X. We'll incorporate that into our study and say that the cause of death in these cases is X. The causes of death in these cases are Y. And they uh, all relate to um, the hurricane. Unless, if and only if, someone says, oh no, it's not related to the hurricane. And they'll go, well, good enough for us. 
So this, is the now I'm not blaming the authors of the study for this because this is something the media did, trotting out this Miss Leon story about this woman who died. But in, in these statistics, she is going to be counted, I think, as a hurricane-related death. So let's think about that. Uh, this is an age-old question of how how far uh, how close do two things have to be related before you you uh, attribute some other event to its occurrence? So suppose that you find uh, um, oh let me go back to the closet example. So, um, that's where there's a, a small period of time between the event, the awareness of the event, and the discovery of the dead body. But even if you see a person shoot another person, that does not imply that the shooting was the cause of the death, or is in any sense whatever related to the cause of death. So even seeing the event with your very eyes does not license the proposition that that is what caused uh, that death. You have to do the science. Because as it turns out, sometimes people shoot people who are already dead. Sometimes people uh, will shoot someone to cover up another crime, uh, or you know, I guess maybe I should give another example. Of that sometimes people will torch a dead, tor torch a person to cover up another crime. Even if you see the torching, you can't say that that's what caused the death. The person could have already been shot to death, and uh, the the thing that was going to kill them was the gunshot, not the fire. So you can have these independent events happening. One of which, which isn't obvious to anyone seeing it, is the actual cause of death such that if you ask, uh, so that if you ask the person who saw it, they will tell you something that isn't the cause of death. Oh, it might be a bad thing, but it's not the reason why the person died. So anyway, suppose a person happens into the desert and finds a dead body, and you go, oh, it's been really hot, dehydration, heat stroke, that kind of thing, case done. Well, if we follow this statistical method of just asking people what they think happened based on no examination, at all by anyone who knows anything about anything related to the subject, well, you'll say, obviously, it's dehydration. But, lo and behold, you do uh, the, the autopsy. It was a heart attack. So, in these, these public health researchers' minds, the case was done when the person said, I saw the person, the cause of death was, in fact, dehydration. When, in reality, it was some other cause completely unrelated to the desert conditions. Now, suppose it was dehydration. Now, you can, of course, say there that, well, okay, the person, uh, the, the cause of death, once you determine this dehydration, is the high heat coupled with lack of water, you know, that kind of, basically, dehydration, that, that type of thing. And then the question arises, suppose that the person is a doctor, who, now that he's dead, can't take up his shift, which is going to mean that the next shift he's supposed to be working <clears throat> will be short a member, uh, or at least short of his particular his particular uh, skills, and we'll say he's a good doctor. Someone comes in and they die. Uh, and this doctor, we will suppose, could have saved that person's life. The doctor replaced them, or the shortness of staff left them in such a situation where where the uh, the person with the precise skill required to save the life wasn't there. Now, do you say that the desert caused that death? I wouldn't. They would. That. Once the reason for it is they intentionally want because they believe that all things that uh, all bad things that happen of this nature are institutional structural things. It does, has nothing to do with individual decisions that people make. Um, <clears throat> so they want to take the decisions of people out of the situation and just you know these vicissitudes of life in aggregate will turn out this way or that way or whatever. But the problem is, is this: you you can't go saying, oh, because this, you know, this is essentially chaos, you know, the, the uh, butterfly effect. One thing happens here, or chaos, you know, one thing happens here, and it causes this chain of events, so that when a butterfly lands, I saw this on, I think, uh, it wasn't Mad TV, I can't remember which one, Kids in the Hall, a, uh, a butterfly lands on a fence in Ohio, and a woman cooking in Japan burns her hand. Coincidence? I think not. That's essentially their, I'm being hyperbolic, but that's their, chain of reasoning, that uh, it, no matter how attenuated event A and event B are, uh, event A, if it's the type of thing they want to study, causes event B. So the desert, we have to say, is what caused the person to die in the hospital, because the desert, the heat in the desert, coupled with the lack of water of the person, is what causes death. He wasn't there to save the life. Therefore, in, in, in the, uh, the long run, that person's death is attributable to the desert has nothing to do with the decisions that anybody made. 
or the nature of their image. Anyway, so this woman that the media is using is a person who made some decisions. She went to the hospital. Clearly, she had access to health care. Uh, she was treated. Apparent, well, we'll never know whether the treatment was proper or not proper, and whether she died of having a heart attack or a stroke or something else, because they have, uh, they have destroyed the body. The family has destroyed the body in accordance with the wishes of the woman, so it can't now be forensically examined. Um, it can't do an autopsy on it to figure out the cause of death, so now we have to just guess. I'm sorry. We have to scientifically uh, speculate with totally legitimate statistics. Anyway, she made a decision to go to an area that had, uh, you know, lack of uh, cell phone service. In the same way the person who dies in, of dehydration in the desert goes to a place that they know has certain conditions. So to say that the it was the hurricane that is responsible for this woman's death is to deny the fact that she made a conscious choice to walk to a place where she knew uh, she could she did not have the, the telephone access. This happens a lot. You get very stubborn people and, and I'm not like I'm gonna go sit in the, the hurricane flood and then you know when they when something bad happens they say, Oh well it was the hurricane that did it. It wasn't my decision to walk into the flood. Oh my god. No, this woman made a decision. It was a bad decision. She should have stayed nearer to, to the health care facilities that were in fact available because she had been treated and discharged. Maybe she died because of me medical malpractice. The fact that she has wandered into an area where it makes it difficult for her to get uh, telephone reception doesn't get to, doesn't mean you get, does not license the claim that the reason she is dead is Hurricane Maria. But for the existence of Hurricane Maria, this woman would remain alive. Not true. There are a number of things that happened, any one of which could be the but for thing, the thing that without which her death would not have happened, or all of those things. None of those things could have been true, and she could have just been you know, she was going to die that day anyway. You don't know. And then they talk about the length of time it took the paramedics to get there. Or it took the paramedics a certain amount of time to get there after the phone was made. Uh, what they don't do is, how long would it have taken to get from where she is to the hospital? Assuming everything was working perfectly. What would be the average response time? Would it be within that window or without that window? They don't talk about it because the media doesn't care. The, the people who publish the, the, the uh, study have done their job. They have written something that is looks profound, it's going to get a lot of media attention, their next their next uh, little foray into the field will be funded now to find out uh, who did what and, and uh, why Donald Trump is evil. That's, that is that is a narrative. It's why they're doing it. It's why they're publishing it in an election season. It's why they don't want to wait for the timely and accurate findings. They want to get it published now because, you know, it's the Harvard narrative that Trump is evil. You know, you, you this isn't a big secret. Uh, Harvard isn't exactly quiet about the fact that it hates Donald Trump, it loves Hillary Clinton, and uh, it wants to do everything that it can to uh, delegitimize a, a legitimately elected president and to swing the election so that way he will be crippled. But whatever. So they did their bit. They published this uh, non-scientific uh, hypothesis. The media is reporting on it. The damage is done. The narrative is out there. And uh, so, you know, both parts are working the, the way that it's supposed to. They have gotten the funding. They're, go they're going to get the funding they want in the future. They have gotten the narrative out there. The media has cooperated in it. has gone out to find these examples to really uh, help drive, ratchet up the, you know, get right in the feels to ratchet up, up the emotional impact. And so that's why this is done. It's certainly not done for science. No competent person who knows anything about rigor is going to think, I keep pointing because that's where my phone is. The study does not actually live in my phone. I just have excerpts of it in here that I emailed to myself. It lives in my computer, which is that way. I should point there. No, it lives out there. I should point, I should gesture more widely to edify you all in the celestial way. But anyway, anyhow, no competent researcher is going to look at this and think that it's good because it explicitly uh, takes issue with actual empirical evidence that has in fact been determined. It doesn't like the findings of the autopsies that it, so far it knows about. It disagrees with them. Now, how does it disagree with them? No clue! Now, one of the authors of the study says, it's really we were boots on them. We were the ones out there handing out the surveys to people and asking them questions. Really? The, the medical people, the forensic people, are the ones out there 
boots on the ground, collecting the corpses and examining them. So you have, you have people who are, you know, medical examiners collecting corpses, doing autopsies and returning findings versus people who hand out leaflets and ask you, what do you think about the leaflet we've handed out? Do tell us what you think. And somehow or other, the leafleting bit, the, the questionnaire bit, is the real science and the actual autopsies. That's the questionable bit. This is how a-scientific these people are. And they, uh, they can fuck right off. All right. Have a great day.